All right, CPW Universe, this is the voice, Lee Boy, for Critical Pro Wrestling CPW. If you haven't done it already, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, hit that like button, and don't forget to comment in the comment section below. This is another podcast, vidcast, whatever you want to call it, dealing with Critical Pro Wrestling. Now, we just got off the heels of an exciting summer pay-per-view summer brawl hope you guys enjoyed it let's get into the announcement that i have for you guys dealing with cpw first and foremost we're going to be dealing with the two-week break that i'm going to be taking i'm taking a two-week break for maintenance because i do this on my computer a lot of files um, need to be looked at a lot of things need to be deleted to make room for more things I need to store stuff, so it's a lot of maintenance behind this, a lot of stuff I need to look at, so for the next two weeks um, after this podcast as you hear, I will be on a hiatus for two weeks, during that time I will be filming uh, new episodes for CPW to air once I come back, Um, my release date will be put up for you guys, so you know I didn't just jump up and abandon the channel and just walk away from it, I, I am returning, that is something you can all look forward to um but i do need a two-week break just to clear my mind and also for some maintenance and also for some filming that should give us another another three to four episodes if i take this two-week break definitely going to be taking more of these breaks um as time goes on i can't do every week when i'm just the only person here thank you and shout out while i'm here on the podcast to raz Uh, For helping with the color commentary Let me know in the comment section below If you like Raz joining And helping out on the commentary Definitely show your appreciation In the comment section below Uh, Show him some love That way he can read it and see it And know that he did a great job I'm getting all kinds of great feedback About how well he's done At the a pay-per-view, which I enjoyed every minute of. It was a lot of stuff that we had to cut out. Excuse me, that I had to cut out. Excuse me, because I'm the one editing. Um, I had to cut out a lot of stuff, a lot of the bloopers and the stuff that we did behind the scenes that were just hilarious because I mean, I was a one-man show for a very long time doing CPW, and to have somebody else do the color commentary and don't know what's going to come out of his mouth, um, I gave him a direction. He went with it. And and certain things would come out, and it just had me dying out laughing. You guys would never hear it. It was probably the stuff that you laughed at, I probably laughed at too. You just didn't hear it. Uh, if you watch uh, Summer Brawl. Again, shout out to the Raz for that. Um, the Red Book. I know I told you guys that I was going to talk about the infamous Red Book. Now, in that Red Book, that Red Book has... Um, a whole bunch of organized things like because I use the computer uh, there is ways to put the theme songs into the game because of the computer so I have that I have a way of putting theme songs into the game via my computer um, that's one of the, the modifications and things like that that you, we get access to as using the computer instead of doing it on console I have in that book every match. Every match is written down in that book. Who wins? Who lost? What happened? What transpired? Um, as the major changes and things of that nature. Debuts. And I write that out all the way up until whatever the latest episode I'm going to up to the pay per view. So in that book is a whole bunch of matches that are written out: wins and losses. Uh, debuts, certain little cutscenes, what happened here, what happened there. That's what that book is about. The big red book is the organized book. I also have the finishing moves. What's the name of the finishing moves? Uh, what's this and and that? It's just a whole bunch of organization when it comes down to that red book, and I carry it around with me because sometimes ideas are fleeting, and sometimes you really need to have that um, on tap. So I carry that book around with me everywhere I go. 
It's a bag I keep with me. And I'm constantly writing in it. I'm constantly coming up with matches. I'm constantly adding to the move lists. I'm constantly adding and updating the theme songs and rosters and things of that nature in that book. I do also have a PD, not a PDF file. It's an XF, XFL. Here it is. Vince McMahon is talking about me or The Rock somewhere. I have an Excel file that I keep to track wins, losses, and new entries and title belts and because you need all of those things if you want to be as organized as possible you definitely need all those things you don't need the red book but i carry the red book around as a redundancy to backtrack the x the xfl why i keep thinking about this xfl the excel file (laughs) okay that's the thing about the podcast the podcast is um uncensored i'm not cutting or editing any of this so you're hearing it raw um, just like normally you would hear any other podcast. So, with that being said, I have the Raz who's going to do a rundown. So, if you haven't seen the Summer Brawl pay-per-view, I encourage you to go check it out right now or skip ahead to when I talk about the questions. But right here, I will make an edit and the Raz is going to give us an update or recap on what happened at Summer Brawl. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Critical Pro Wrestling Summer Brawl Recap. I'm Raz. The first match, an eight-man battle royale for the newly minted television championship. After defeating seven other combatants, William Danger rises to the top of the pile and retains the TV championship. Now, let's all keep in mind, William Danger had to vacate his hardcore championship as it was being replaced by the television championship. That say a lot about the man, doesn't it? All right. The next match, a tornado tag between the reigning champions, the Mega Bucks, the Varsity Squad, the veterans, Havoc, and the indie darlings, the Pit Bulls. Long, grueling match, and some shenanigans, and ultimately, the Pitbulls came out on top, newly crowned Tag Team Champion. Seemingly on fire from their victory over the Mega Bucks previously, the Pitbulls' new champions can sit pretty. But not for too long, boys. Don't get used to it. Next, we have the U.S. Championship. Hiro Tanaka versus The Nightmare. And Brandon Myers accompanying The Nightmare along with his bad breath. Ultimately, having succumbed to the wounds given to him by Brandon Myers previously, Hiro Tanaka fell to The Nightmare stench. Allowing The Nightmare to retain his U.S. title. The only way to do alleviate the smell was to watch the Rose Championship, Victoria Ortiz versus Roxanne, cat-like reflexes, superhuman strength, agile, and tenacious. This battle was hard-pressed, but ultimately a victorious slam put Roxanne away and Victoria Ortiz retained her belt. And last but not least, we have the CPW World Championship title match between Chris Gates and Aaron Awesome. The teacher versus the chin strap. What do you say, folks? This was a grueling match. This showed their sterner stuff, the steel in their veins, particularly around Chris Gates' chin strap. But nonetheless, a battle amongst titans, ultimately leading to not one, not two, but three package pile drivers to clinch that title. Go ahead, enjoy your time in the light, Chris Gates. It's not going to last for long. The teacher always has a lesson plan. Well, that was the Summer Brawl recap, signing it off and handing it over to the voice, Lee Boy. And this is Critical Pro Wrestling. We'll see you in the ring. All right, it's time to answer some questions. Uh, So I'm going through my channel. I'm checking out the questions. I normally post them in the community tab, um, the podcast, vidcast, question time. Um, Okay, so from Phantom One Gaming, thank you, Phantom One Gaming, for 
all the questions you have, and you've been uh, giving me a bunch of questions since the start of the the restart of the podcast. So thank you. I want to give you a shout out for that. Uh, Phantom One X Gaming says, "Is there any wrestler in the female division that you believe is going to be a breakout star?" Wow, um, that's why I said, "Hmm, good question," because the female division is so robust right now. Uh, Roxanne fell off her throne, and Victoria Ortiz is currently the one taking up house <laughs> in that spot. Um, but if I had to pick who would be the breakout star of CPW in the female division, biasly, biasly, I think I would say Sharon Velez. Um, Sharon Velez, if you don't know, go back and watch the roster reveal. Um, she's somebody I was very, she's, I'm very sweet on her, that character, Sharon Velez. She's, I, I have her as the poster child for C, CPW, and it wound up being Roxanne uh, for a bit who was the one carrying the torch for the women's division pretty much on her back. Um, she became the breakout star. I never envisioned her to be the breakout star. But if, again, my honest answer would be, I'm giving you two answers. My honest answer is Roxanne. She's probably, because of what she's done, um, she's always going to be looked at in a certain kind of light for being a female who went through how many episodes of CPW? 11 episodes of CPW, two pay-per-views um, without a blemish on her record until then. You know, that's unheard of. That hasn't even happened in the male division yet. Um, somebody that dominant. So right now, uh, the breakout star was Roxanne. She's she's definitely the breakout star since day one. My biased opinion is Sharon Velez. But if I had to say an up-and-comer, like if you're, if you're asking me who is the breakout star that I see in the future, like somebody who's going to be, everybody's going to be cheering for, that's hard. And that is extremely hard because all the computers' ratings are the same. Everybody has an 85, so it's anyone's game. It's just basically what the computer does at that point or who they favor or who gets caught up in one of my storylines. So it's a lot of factors that go into that. So I really don't know who would definitely be the um, breakout star off the top of my head indefinitely. But right now... The answer is Roxanne is the breakout star. She is the breakout star. Um, Bias opinion, Sharon Velez. And right now, who knows, that opinion may change if Victoria Ortiz keeps uh, hitting that victorious slam on everybody and one-shotting them. (laughs) Okay, so again, thank you, Phantom 1X Gaming, for that question. Next, we're going on to Amen, who says, do some of the matches do some of the match matches outcomes surprise you as it is CPU versus CPU? Do I get surprised at some of these matches? Thank you, Amen, for your question. And yes, I do. I do get surprised very often um, because in your mind you envision certain things. Like in a normal wrestling, in a normal booking, you know, you book the way you want or who you want to win. Like a lot of you guys may go, oh, this guy versus this guy, I want the Nightmare to win. It's just because he's a popular wrestler, I want the Nightmare to win. But I like the unpredictable feel that anybody at any time can lose. Anybody at any time could win. I I love that. It it makes it so unpredictable. Um, The computer and your feedback basically dictates the fandom of how the program goes and how the wrestlers feel and react like you guys made night you it's not me that's making a nightmare uh a fan favorite it's you guys i just created the character but you guys are the ones that are putting him on a pedestal i can give him the opportunity as the booker but (laughs) it's up to him to perform especially again when everybody's ratings is a solid 85 across the board 
Now, how do they get to that 85 may be different from, from character to character because I do like to have it, you know, where if you're a powerhouse character, for example, there's no way that you should have high-flying moves <laughs> and things of that nature when you weigh damn near 400 pounds. Like, I don't expect you to go to the top rope and do a red arrow. You know, you're not you're not supposed to be doing that. You're not supposed to be doing no... 650s, 480s, and whatever, <laughs> you ain't supposed to be doing that at damn near 500 pounds or 400 pounds, whatever. Okay, And I, and I know there are some guys up there in weight who can do a lot of great things, but that's like the big show going to the top rope and trying to hit, you know, a red arrow. It's not happening. <laughs> it, it's not. So do some of the matches surprise me? Yes, and yes, indeed they do. And they surprised me so much um, that, again, I have to work on a, you know, my story. If it fits the story, I let it rock. If it doesn't fit the story, I will replay the match. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm not going to sit here and say I just let the computer go buck wow. <laughs> I will replay the match until the outcome that I want happens. That does happen sometimes. Sometimes I want this specific character to win and I will replay the match until that character wins but then for the most part I just let it go I just let it rot because that's what's exciting about it you know if it's not a storyline thing I just I just like to see it play out it just looks really really well and one of the most fun and creative parts is feeding off of what you just saw and then making it into a reality um just for some of you guys out there, um, a little behind the scene curtain thing. For the summer brawl, the outcome you saw wasn't the outcome that I originally had for that storyline. But I said, you know what? This feels right. It feels right to have Chris Gates win this. Spoiler alert if you didn't see it. But it, it was definitely something that I said I definitely feel... It feels right about him winning, you know. You, and you guys, most of you guys that felt the same way when you watched it, you was like, he should get this win. You know, I'm pretty sure from a wrestler or fan standpoint, you was like, it would make sense for Chris Gates. In, in, in a regular wrestling world, it would make sense for him to win this match. All right, so again, thank you, Amen, for the question. Do some of the matches' outcomes surprise you as it's CPU versus CPU? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And for the majority of the part, I do let it rock. I'm going to put that out there again. For the majority of the part, I will let the outcomes rock. But if it interferes with my story, I have to adjust as according. It's okay. Now, next, um, moving on. I am Batman. I am Batman. Thank you for your question. He says, where... Do you get inspiration to create your cause? How long does it usually take to come up with the gimmick? Um, my inspiration comes from real, you no know, real life wrestling, um, or things that I want to see in wrestling. As far as characters are concerned and and where they go, um, Aaron Awesome is a personal, very very close and personal project of mine. As he's somebody that I've been using since, you know, again, back to the N64 wrestling days. So he's a deep-seated, deep-rooted character because he's mine. Uh, he's quite essentially me, but wrestling. Uh, if I had to be a character in wrestling, he would, he would be it. Um, but outside of him, everybody else, and, and, and included him too, they are um, uh, an, an uh, uh, um, amalgam. I forgot the, how you say that when something is mixed together. You know, Marvel and DC came together and made that company. I would I never said their name right. But anyways, when you mash up something and you put it together, um, I do that a lot. I like to invent and look at something and piece it with something else and put it together. So where do I get the inspiration to create my own cause? It's from real wrestling, real wrestlers, um, past, present, and future, um, seeing what bits and pieces that I like from them and then 
see what bits and pieces are like from another wrestler, and then I create a whole new thing. Um, and I just think about it, and I go, okay, what do, what do I want here? I want this kind of person to have, uh, you know, the Nightmare, for example, Undertaker tendencies mixed with Finn Balor, a little bit of The Fiend, a little bit of, some people said Raven, which I can clearly see, um... And you just mix that all in the pot, and and, and I'll poof, I'll pops the nightmare. Okay, um, how long does it usually take to come up with these gimmicks? Um, I get in a mood. I think every core creator does that. I think they get in a mood and say, "Hey, today I want to, I want to take Doink the Clown and mix him with the Big Show." And, and you know, what if you had a guy like this? You know, that's where it normally comes from. And um, how long does it take to come up with the gimmick? It doesn't take that long. It starts off with an idea. But I think the, the longest part is actually turning your idea into a, a physical manifestation when you're sitting there in the character creation suite trying to take what's in your brain and throw it on, you know, in the game and get it to as close as possible of the vision that you had in your head. I think that's one of the hardest parts to do sometimes, especially when you're limited with faces and you have to, you know, get skins and textures and try as po- as much as possible to get that look and feel that you want out of the character that you're trying to create. Okay, I know that sounds like a whole bunch of babbling, but <laughs> that's exactly what it is. Trying to take what's in your brain and make it come out. Okay? So, with that, I am Batman. Um, I will go even further and give you guys a little bit of um, an example i know i talked about the nightmare but like chris gates is technically i'm just putting it out there i don't know if you guessed it or not but chris gates is technically hulk hogan mixed with goldberg and lex luth lex i'm gonna say lex luthor you hear me wow lex luger (laughs) Okay, so Goldberg, Lex Luger, and Hogan makes Chris Gates. That's the idea I had in my head. I wanted an old school guy who was considered a legend in the business, um, who still can go. He's not. He's he's old, but he's not super old. He's immensely strong, and he's not going to be doing no leg drops and all of them other things. He's gonna, he's going to have a modern day move set, you know, pretty much. And the dude is a powerhouse, you know, and that's why you see uh, Chris Gates, he does the Goldberg jackhammer, okay, um, he doesn't have a spear, so he, he's not like Goldberg in that sense, but he's like Hogan in the sense of uh, a, a legend in the business, an icon who is still wrestling and still going, still able to put on great matches, you know, I would compare that to Hogan in WCW days, um, and Lex Luger in the sense that, you know, he, he's, he's immensely strong and he, he loves flexing and he has that personality. You know, he doesn't have Hogan's personality, that's for damn sure, but he's, he definitely has a Lex Luger-ish kind of personality. So there you go. There's other wrestlers in there who I may make a trivia one day and ask people to guess who this kind of wrestler was based off of. Some of you can probably guess who some of them are already uh, based off of. But there's, there will be some that might surprise you. Okay. Okay, so I have one last question that comes from Junior. Junior asks, Hiro Tanaka definitely is a dark horse. The Nightmare is the golden boy. Will the wave ever unmask? Will the wave ever unmask? Junior, my answer is no. The wave will never unmask. That will kill the mystique of the wave. He might change his mask, but I doubt he will ever unmask. Um, I believe unmasking certain people, it loses their mystique. You know, like when Kane finally came out and, and did what he did, kind of lost some momentum. Rey Mysterio was never the same in WCW uh, when he took off his mask. Um, So I believe 
mass wrestlers need to stay mass because they, they lose the mystique. It's almost like when Sting, and I had nothing wrong with Sting not talking, um, or talking, excuse me, rather, but I thought when he wasn't talking, it was more impactful, you know, because now that he spoke, we're going to be expecting him to speak every week. We expect him to speak all the time now. It was more impactful when he just shut the hell up and just spoke with his body and he spoke with his actions. That, to me, tells a way bigger story than taking away something that they can never do again. You know, Stink can't go back into the non-talking mode again unless he, he could he could have started it all over in a new company when he came back to WWE and was just straight up quiet. That would have worked for him. But since you're already there in WCW, that wouldn't have worked again. You can't go back to just being quiet because now everybody's going to have a reason or ask, why, why are you doing that? Um, Kane, once he took the mask off, the thrill is gone now. The, 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 the sense of will he ever do it is gone because you know how he looks now under that mask. So the best thing now for him is to get a new one. And even then, the mystique is gone. It, it ran its course. Some people weren't really that big into WCW, so they really don't know how Rey Mysterio looked without his mask off. But if you go back, he joined this group called the Radicals, and he had his mask taken off, I believe, by Kevin Nash. Was it Kevin? I think it was Kevin Nash that unmasked Rey Mysterio, which is a bunch of crap. And he was to me, wasn't the same after that when he got his mask taken off. And then, you know, when WWE bought WCW, he wound up putting the mask back on. So, so for all the WWE fans out there that never saw Ray without his mask, it was a new thing for for him to do that. See what I mean? Like it was new for him to put his mask back on because it makes sense. He's in a brand new company. Some people might not have watched WCW and might not have seen him without his mask. So he got away with it there. But for the WCW fans that did watch it and knew how he looked. Him putting back the mask on in WWE, it makes sense for him. But for us, we were like, yo, we already saw how you look. You know what I mean? The mystique and nostalgia of who Rey, how Rey Mysterio looks behind the mask is poof and gone. All right. With that, that's all the questions for CPW or wrestling in general. My name is Lee Boy. Thank you for checking this out again. Big announcement. I'm going on a two-week break. I will see you back. I'll be posting uh, constantly in the uh, community section tab. So don't worry about that. So you definitely will be updated on what's going on with CPW. I am tired. It is really late at night that I'm making this podcast. So I'm apologizing right now. But don't sound as energetic as I normally would. Maybe that's just in my head. Maybe it's a sleep deprivation. Anyway, I've been rambling for too long. My name is Lee Boy. I'm the voice of CPW. This has been another Fitcast podcast, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Leave your comments. Leave questions for the next podcast in the comment section below, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. If you want to learn how to support CPW, hit that like button. Leave a comment in the comment yeah. section. And if I you're not a subscriber, like a what are you doing? Fatal, Hit the subscribe button today fast, to stay up on the latest and greatest. Hit the bell for notifications when I drop new videos on CPW. I keep on moving forward. Keep on moving forward. Always getting closer. Marching to it. Put out all the sun, it's my only medicine, yeah Everything I do, I'm just being genuine, yeah I'm sick of being screwed, feel my own adrenaline, yeah I do this what I do, and I hope you let me in, let me in, yeah <laughs>